Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowen with Olympia Piano and in this short video we are going to be going over group two from this blue dozen a day book. It's called the preparatory book. Stretching we're just getting used to where all the C's are located. So we've got what I call middle C, high C, and super high C. Super high C has two lines. Super low C has two lines. So gentle roll-ups on the half notes and our hands will be stretched up for this one. So we have Meet back in the middle, together, together, and then do this with your pinky, two, three, four. Tiptoe running, in previous chapter we had the flowing running. Now we're gonna have the tiptoe running on the tips, the top portion of your finger pad, nice bridge, and a lot of wrist bouncing. I'll show you that in a second from the side view so you can see that wrist bounce. Here we go. Here's group two exercise two tiptoe running. I want you to see the quick wrist action for this one. So my hand is nice and set and I'm going to just have a small snap of the wrist with super focused fingers. So don't let this part cave in. Keep it nice and focused. You'll be playing on the tips. Exercise three, jumping off the front porch steps. We're going to pop off this C chord, Do, Mi, so, down to super low C and low C. That line between the treble clef to that low C means the right hand is going to go down and play in the bass clef. Here we go. So we're going to pop, move, roll up, pop, move, roll up, pop, move, roll up, then a slow Exercise four, climbing up a ladder, preparing us for the broken thirds that occur so often in music. Broken thirds, I mean, instead of playing like this, those would be thirds played at the same time. Broken thirds are one at a time. So you'll notice in this one, every measure starts with a finger one, but the notes keep going up. So what we're going to have to do is scoot our thumb over. I'll show you right now. So we have one, three, two. Right here, the thumb's going to have to scoot right next to the fourth finger and then do it again. Scoot. So I like to kind of stand up on my fourth finger to make space for that thumb to scoot next door. And gentle bounces on the wrist for this. Nice hand position, good bridge, good firm first knuckle. Here we go. Also do this with solfege. Do, mi, re, fa, mi, so, fa, la, so, ti, la, do, ti, re, do. Good to get in the habit of singing along if you can, right when you're starting. Exercise four, what I'd like you to see in this one is the shift from the fourth finger to the thumb next door on these switches. So we're going to have stand up, stand up, open out, stand up. Exercise five, left hand has the same thing. It's going to be going backwards with the solfege, so down the scale with the syllables but we're still gonna do the same thing, standing up on finger four. So we'll do no solfege first. One, three, two, stand up and scoot. Two, stand up and scoot. Stand up. Now slowly with solfege, starting on do, going backwards in the scale. So we have do, la, ti,
exercise six, jumping like a frog, the first thing I want you to look for and play with your second finger are the main notes, the large notes. So we have C, G, C, and with the third finger, C, G, C. So that's Do, So, Do, Do, So, Do. Now those little tiny notes, those are called grace notes, and they're played slightly before the main note. So it's going to feel like you're kind of turning to the right when you play these. So it's going to sound like this. And then that large upside down V is an accent. You see there's a staccato on the notes and an accent. So basically you're going to feel, you're going to pop up on that. It's going to be staccato and accented. So you're turning, you're doing three things in this exercise. And then the next one is a sharp. So they're all half steps. And the same thing with the right hand, turn to the right, turn to the right, just yanking your wrist up. So let's do that one more time. One, move, move during the rest, two, three, four, right hand. Exercise six, I want you to see the quick snap of the hand while passing through that little grace note. So we have two, three, four, to the right, to the right, to the right. Exercise seven, hanging from the bar by the right hand. Your pinky is the bar. So the pinky has to stay down the whole entire time while your thumb plays. Here we go. Touch, touch. By the way, I want to mention at this point, we're working on the curve of the first knuckle for fingers two and three and four. In the pinky, we're working on it as well, but when we have a situation like this that's a hold, it might cause too much tension to keep that totally curved for this. So it's okay to just play that flat, flattish for something like this. So exercise eight, hanging from the bar by the left hand. This time, the left hand's bar is the thumb. So it's gonna feel a little bit different. The solfege syllables are so and do. So we're going to hold the thumb. Touch, touch, touch. Touch, touch, touch. Touch, touch, touch. Roll up for four counts. Exercise nine, hanging from the bar with both hands. Now this will feel backwards. So your hands are going to want to do the same thing but they're not doing the same thing. So we're holding so, and we're holding so. Do, 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 hold so, touch for do. So, do, 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 and roll up for four counts. Exercise 10, playing with a yo-yo. Right hand is on me, finger three. So right hand's just going to hold every measure. Left hand's going to go down the scale. Do, ti, la, so, fa. And back up. Left hand's making circles. Right hand's doing roll-ups. Exercise 11, swinging. This is fun. We're going to do a bunch of broken chords, but the third one's going to be different. So the first two chords, like we did before in the arpeggios, notice this one is going to start on G. So so, do, so. And then the left hand crossover, that dotted line means, and that LH means that the left hand's going to play the first note of the second measure, which is a second higher or a step higher from the pinky. And again, don't play it, don't move your hand like this, just cross over to the side a little bit. So it's going to look like this. So, do. Now, the left hand is going to still start with G, but the right hand, instead of playing Do, Mi, so, the 
your right hand. His thumb is going to scoot down to G. We're not going to go from here to here. We're just going to switch the fingers and let there be a little space between finger two and finger one. Okay, so here is the second line of this piece. Now we're going to cross to G this time, even though the right hand pinky is there. And finally, left hand goes down to low C and crosses to high C. So this one is giving you this one, one, five, seven, one harmony. Here we go. And our hands are going to feel kind of jumbled together at the beginning of this. We'll do it one more time. So, Exercise 12, fit as a fiddle all day long, getting this harmony. Left hand's showing us that harmony with Do and Mi. And then later on in measure three, we have So and Fa. And that is an inversion of this chord, putting this F down here to make that special harmony. Right hand has chord tones. And scale tones. Here we go. One, two, two, three. Switch the left hand. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Thank you for watching this short tutorial on a dozen a day blue book group two. I hope that you found it helpful and I hope you will subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on dozen a day and piano literature and piano technique. Thanks again for watching.